Welcome to Inside Fury. I'm Nicholas Morton Cheaton. Across the way in the Lotus Hatch right now is... The Challenger, Richard. Hi. So uh, I am the American tanker for World of Tanks, and Richard is our British counterpart. So we're going to take a wander around uh, inside the M4A2 76 HVSS, uh, which is basically a way of saying it is a diesel engine Sherman with a 76mm gun and the E8 type suspension system. Did you like Flint Fury movie? Absolutely, what a great movie. And of course, yeah, Nick, you've just hit the nail on the head there. This is not any old Sherman, of course. This is the Fury Sherman. Let's uh, make that very clear. Yeah. Um, so uh, as you can see, of course, on the outside, Fury is uh, visibly indicated by three things. One, it is 280s camo schemes. So they had the black and green. Most Americans were very boring and only did a plain green. Uh, the second thing was they put logs and whatnot on the side for protection. And the third, they put your name on the gun too. So uh, we, we would do that in the American Army. What, what do you have in the name of your wagon? You would not even consider putting your name on it. It's just so American, it's unbelievable. I don't know, I've seen British tanks with names. Usually battlefields. Oh yeah, yeah, no, sorry, not on the barrel, of course. Yeah, you have names for the vehicles, of course, but not, not actually on the barrel. So that was... Uh, that was were, you, were you allowed to have any fun with them, or do they have to be battlefields? No, they have to be battlefields, yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. I oh, know, we're, we're, we're a little different. So usually, it's, <laughs> it's for us, it's either the, the letter has to be the same, or when, when I was commanding outlaw troop, all, all the vehicle names were supposed to be outlaws, like Darth Vader, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Al Capone, or whatever. Anyway, so I guess we might as well start with the cannons, since we're talking about the two. 76 millimeter M1. This was a lightweight, high-velocity anti-tank gun that it took actually years for the Americans to put into the M4. They originally started to do one a bit like the Firefly for the small turret. Didn't fit. Armored force didn't like it. So this was actually a very good high-velocity tank gun. Uh, service quite easily over on the loader's side. So Richard, where is the ammo? Absolutely, I think you know it's an indic that actually most of the uh, certainly the ready round ammo racks have been removed. Um, you've got some ammunition obviously down here. I'm not sure if you can see that from where you are at the moment, but uh, I do know that it is in the hull. It is in the hull. Um, other things to note in here: radio directly behind us, uh, pistol port over there behind behind Richard. Uh, you have a machine gun to the front. Absolutely. Um, of course, you can also see from down there where we've got the driver uh, and also the bow gunner's position, which I believe we're going to have a closer look at later on. Uh, um, but you mentioned the ammunition, Nick. I mean, always a question on here when everybody talks about the Sherman um, is, of course, the uh, you know, the Ronson tag that it has. Um, you know, what was all that about? Why why was it designed as such? With you know such a well, this is this is a wet stowage vehicle. Uh, so the wet stowage vehicles, they had protected ammunition. So before they went to wet stowage, they had a burn rate of between 50 to 80 percent. Uh, a lot of Shermans were burning when they, uh, by the time that the Germans were done with them. Uh, by putting it into a special water-based solution, uh, the burn rate went down to like 5 or 10 percent. You know, I have to say, sort of as a, as a brick guy, we've always assumed that you know it is one of these sort of epitomes of tanks. Everybody, even if you've got no interest whatsoever, knows about the Sherman. Um, it is one of those things, but when you consider that you know the three main characteristics, so protection and firepower and mobility, let's face it, the Sherman was not great in any three of those aspects. So why really did it become such an iconic vehicle? Now I, I'm going to argue with that. The early Shermans, yes, I, I will agree with you, had issues with mobility because of the, uh, the narrow tracks and the firepower because of 75 was doing sterling service. I mean, they had no problems facing tigers and panthers in Italy, but yes, you had a problem by the time you got to Normandy. And armor, if you think about the effect of armor on the front, it's about a half inch less than the Tiger One, which isn't bad. Um, I hasten to add that, of course, where was uh, where did the Sherman first see uh, active service? Which, which country was it? Uh, we gave them to the Brits. Indeed, yeah, it was the Al British Eighth Army, of course, yeah, the Second Battle of Al, Al Alamein. So, um, yeah. And you very much liked it. Indeed, yeah, yeah. And of course, it was so widely used throughout you know, numerous amounts of countries. Yeah. Uh, I, I think pretty much everyone used it. Yeah, Soviets, yeah, one stage or another. The the Brazilians, uh, yeah, they were, in, they were in Italy. Okay, so now we've popped down uh, myself and Nick. Nick's sitting in the uh, driver's position, and I'm sitting in the bow gunner's position. What's it like up there, Nick? It looks like you've got a lot of room, actually, to uh, be fair. This is actually a very roomy tank to drive. I mean, I've been in a lot of driver's position, and this is actually very well laid out. Uh, one of the things they did that uh, they moved from the M3 medium that it was based on, the M3 driver was sitting astride this massive transmission, kind of like riding it like a horse. For the M4, they moved the driver over to the left. It's uh, your typical manual transmission with a clutch and an accelerator. Uh, breaks, of course, are your two tillers. 
Uh, they're, they're, they're a lot of fun to drive killer vehicles. I, I have to say, it looks pretty... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm surprised that, you know, considering especially how tall you are, um, the instrument panel as well, I have to say, that is one of the most efficient instrument panels I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it's all there, um, it's but it's nice and simple, see, yeah. And if you're looking through your driver's periscope here, I mean, it's, it's very... You don't have to move your head very far to see it. Uh, but the only problem you have is if you're driving with your head up, well, then you've got to be able to look down. But uh, speaking of the hatches, we each have a hatch, and uh, this is one of the reasons I believe that Sherman crew, uh, Sherman crew casualties are so small, was it is actually very easy to get out of this tank in a hurry. 